What's up YouTube? So today I have another video. We're going to talk about version control systems. I'm sure if you've looked at a, any web developer job position really it says please be familiar with Git or Subversion or some other VCN version control system. That's what we're going to look at today. What the difference is between Git and GitHub or Bitbucket or things like that. So we're going to do it a little bit differently today so just come with me and uh, let's get started. Hey there, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about Git versus GitHub and the difference between the two. So if you look at the canvas here, we have our canvas and we have our computer. Now when you're coding, you have all your code here and you want to be able to save it somewhere so that your friends or coworkers or whoever wants to can access it. And so to do that, you basically push your code with Git to the cloud. We've all heard of the cloud, just a hosting service. And that is GitHub. That is where GitHub comes in to play. Now, unless otherwise specified, generally you're pushing to a master branch. And now every master branch is inside of a repository, which is just known as a repo, which just is your project, whatever project you're working on. So generally, you're pushing to the master branch here. But if you wanted to do something special and push it to a different branch and work on something without editing this master branch here, you can push it to the separate branch over here. Or maybe, maybe another one with a different feature over here. Maybe your friend has an idea and he wants to work on something and he's, he's over here on another side of the world and he has an idea. And he makes, he makes his own push here to his own branch. And that is exactly what this is called. When you push your code, it's known as a push. And when your friend gets the code down from these branches, it's called a pull. And so now we have this purple one, this master branch. And let's say, let's say we're done with all of these. We've, we've in implemented all of the features here. And so you want to merge them all to the master branch. So now this becomes the main branch that everyone is working on. So after you've finished all your side features, you come down here to this master branch. You have your master branch. But let's take a look at what that looks like in the actual code. Okay, first things first, we're going to need Git on our local machine. So type in Git download in Google and it will bring you to this web page. You can then download it for whatever operating system you're on. I'm on Windows, so I downloaded it for Windows. After that, you're going to want to go to github.com. This is what we're going to be using for this video. There's many other sites, but GitHub is one of the most popular websites. Go ahead and register there and after you've registered it'll bring you to this page and then we're going to need to set up Git on our local machine so that when we push our code or whatever from our machine to the cloud, GitHub, it goes to the right place. If you're on Windows like me, go ahead and type in Git for Windows and it will bring you to this page. Download it, install it, and then you can basically right click anywhere and type in Git bash here and it will bring you to that location on your computer inside the terminal. Now if you don't know how to use the, con the terminal that's okay. We're going to need to set up our email and uh, username for git so that it knows to go to github.com. To do that you can just type in set up git in google and it will bring you to this page and just follow the steps. Type in git config dash dash global dot username and then type in whatever it is here. So if I type in git config user.name, because I've already done this, it'll just show you what it is, which is me, myself, Joshua Fluke. And then if you type in git config user.email, 
you have, that's, that's my email there. So after you've set this up, you now have your email. Make sure it's the email that you used to sign up for github.com so that when you make the new repository, it will know to use this email, which is associated with github.com. So let's go back to our GitHub page and go to your repositories button here, then make a new repository. I'm just gonna call it git repo tutorial. This is a test for the git push. And then you can make public and private, but if you wanna make a private one, you have to pay for github.com. But public is always free, other people can see it. Click the create repository button and it will bring you to this page. And this is how to push your code in the terminal from your local computer to the cloud, GitHub. Now you can see I've already gone ahead and created a file here, a readme.md. Now that's basically just a Word file to tell people how to install your app or leave some notes or anything like that. And I went ahead and typed, this is a test for the tutorial video. And I've saved it in this folder, deep in my hard drive, somewhere where I make all these videos and save all this stuff. And there it is right there, readme.md. So if you're on Windows, go ahead and right click and then click git bash here. It will open up your terminal right inside this folder. You can see that it's already there, which is uh, here's the URL and that matches the, the folder. So then you're gonna wanna type in git init and that will initialize your git. It will initialize git in this folder. And you need to do this for every new folder that you make and every new repo. So git init, initialize empty git repository. Then you can type git, git status. And you can see we have one red file there, which means that it's currently being untracked. It means that it will not be pushed to git because you haven't added it to be watched. And so to do that, we can type in git add and then type it out the name or you can type git add dot, and that will add everything in the entire folder. But since we only have one file, I'm just gonna type it out, git add readme.md, and then git status. Again, and we can see it's green, and it's now being watched by git. So now let's, we need to commit it. A commit is just like a local save on your machine if you are in a game or something and you wanna save your game real quick. That's, that's what a commit does. It, it tracks all the changes that you've made to the code on your machine. So git commit dash m, dash m just means message and then open quotation marks and uh, you can type in initial commit. This is generally what you type when you first commit on your computer. Then type that in, close the quote, press enter. Great, so now we come back to our repo here on github.com and we wanna push from an existing repository. An existing repository is just the folder, just the folder here that we're already in. And we can go ahead and we can copy this, git remote add origin, okay, let's copy that. Bring open our terminal again, and let's paste this in. We paste that in, and now we want to do git push dash u origin master, let's copy that, and paste this in. So what we just did was we connected it with this git remote add origin. We connected our local machine that you're sitting at to this internet repository at this specific website under your specific account, under your specific project that you just made on here. We just connected the two. And then the second line right here pushes the files on your local machine from this folder here. It pushes this to the repository online. So that's basically how you push code from your computer to the cloud. And we can take a more in-depth look at this and creating different branches and pulling down other people's code that you don't have on your computer in another video because this video is pretty long as is. So if you like this video, make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get to them. If you wanna see more videos like this, more tutorials and things, make sure to hit the little bell, subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. If you'd like to support the channel, I have a Patreon. You can check that out if you want. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to the 29th Joy of Painting series. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to get your brushes and, and your paints and paint along with us each show. And if you've been with us before, please allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another series of painting shows. 
We'll use about a dozen colors of some unorthodox brushes, and each show, I'll show you how to put some of nature's masterpieces right here on the canvas.